Garage vlog. This is my garage vlog. Hey, I just want to have a moment of silence for the people who have died this week at the hands of violence. There are powers that be in this universe, in high places, that want us to hate each other. They want us to kill each other. They want to get us as polarized as we can possibly be. And that's just the opposite of what needs to happen. Um, we need to love one another. We need to have forgiveness in our hearts. We need to understand that sometimes things go wrong in life. And uh, we've got to quit bearing this burden on our shoulders of anger and hatred. And uh, we can't dislike anyone. And we have to realize that there really isn't good and bad. Because we're all bad. We're all sinners, basically. And there's just grace and there's love. And where there's grace and there's love, there's freedom. But where there's hate and there's anger, there's only terror and fear. And you can't have freedom and fear living together. So I just want to admonish you guys. Love, love, love regardless. You live in a world that's full of hate. Be a beacon of love in spite of the fact that your world is full of hate. This isn't just something you should do. This is your obligation. Now today I want to talk a little bit about the Mandela Effect and scriptures. Because I've noticed something. I've got here what is probably the standard as far as Bibles go. It is a Schofield reference King James Bible. And so anything that I'm quoting from King James will come from this. Now, this is my belief. I think some people take this Bible, which is a book which I believe is inspired by the Almighty. They take it and they worship it. Almost as if it is the Almighty. Well, I believe that Yeshua is the Almighty Word of God. And, and Yeshua is the Son of the Almighty, whose name is Yahweh. Now, when I go through the Mandela Effect on the Scriptures, I want to explain something. Yahweh said that His name should not be brought to naught. A lot of times we translate that as don't take my name in vain. Don't misuse it. But part of what that says is don't bring it to naught. Don't forget it. And when the translators of the King James Bible put the King James Bible together, instead of using the Tetragrammaton, instead of using Yahweh, instead of using the Holy Sacred Name, they use the term the Lord. Whenever there's Elohim or whenever there's Yahweh, they would use that term, the Lord. Here's the problem. His name is not the Lord. The Lord is a title. This is Jeremiah 33, 2. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it. The Lord is his name. Is the Lord his name or is the Lord his title? And where do we get that title from? And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Bali. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. Now if you look at what Bali means, here in the notes, an example, it means my Lord. So basically the word Baal, translated in English, was Lord. How would you like to be called by your enemy's name? That's not very cool. Well, the other day I was reading my scriptures. And in, in, my, 
in my backpack where I do my daily reading, I have a little copy of the scriptures, which is uh, an institute for scriptural research. Uh, the only difference between this and uh, any other Bible is that they've taken the name Yahweh and they've replaced it with the sacred name with the Hebrew letters. And they've taken the name Jesus and they've made it Yeshua. So they've restored the, the sacred name whenever it's been used. When it was Elohim, they put Elohim in there. So that we can understand when we're reading uh, where God used his name, not a title. And something interesting occurred to me as I began to read it. It didn't have some of the changes that the King James had since the Mandela effect. Let's start in Genesis. Repeat after me. In the beginning, God created the and the earth. Heavens, right, it was always plural. Hashemayim is what it is in Hebrew. Well, the, the word heavens is, is a plural word. Yet, the, the translation in the King James now calls it, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now, I've memorized that since I was a kid. I know it's heavens. So, what I did was, I looked it up in the King James, and then I looked it up in the scriptures. If you go to King James now, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Here's what it says in the sacred text in the scriptures. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Well, the very next passage that I wanted to go to was Matthew chapter 7, where it says, Judge not and... and uh, Let's look at the King James. Here is Matthew 7, 1 in the King James. It says, Judge not that ye be not judged. Here is Matthew 7, 1 in the scriptures. It says, Do not judge lest ye be judged. And that's closer to what the King James was. That's the way I remember it. When I memorized it in the King James. What about the term stuff? Some people have problems going, I don't like it when they use that word stuff. Well, it doesn't sound like King James. Yea, I say unto thee, Titus, how art thou? And how art thou stuff today? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. So, let's look up what King James says. Luke 17, 31 in the King James says, In that day he shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house. Let him come down and take it away, and he that is in the field, let him be. Let him likewise not return back. That word stuff just doesn't seem like it belongs in the King James. Ooh. Now let's look up what the scriptures with restored names say. In that day he who shall be on the housetop and his goods in the house, let him come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. His goods, which actually, I think that's closer to the original. Hmm. What about the wineskins? Nobody puts new wine in old wineskins. But in the King James now, instead of wineskins, it says bottles. Check it out. In the King James Bible, it says in Matthew 9, 17, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, lest the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. That does not even make sense, because new wine isn't going to break an old bottle. Now let's see what the scriptures say. Now this is the actual scriptures. It says, Neither do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the new wineskins, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. Now that makes sense, and that's closer to the original. They got it right. Here's my question. My God is named Yahweh. He has a name. Now, as far as how we pronounce it, there's a lot of confusion there. Some say Yahuwah, some people just say Yah for short. Uh, but we know that his name is 
the the sacred name, the Tetragrammaton, and we don't necessarily have the vowels in there, but we know it sounds similar to Yahweh. So he has a name. What if you gave your people a command not to take your name in vain and not to bring it to naught? And they took it so seriously they were scared to say your name. So instead of calling you Yahweh, they started calling you Hashem, which Hashem just means the name. And so we eradicated that, and the translators of the old Bibles, uh, to do the same thing, to kind of protect it, they ended up calling him the Lord, which now we know is kind of a reference to Baal, who is not the Lord. And so we, we have some interesting things going on here. But something that I find kind of interesting is this. It seems like the Almighty has preserved the word that preserved his name. Where his name is not preserved, there's a lot more changes. So that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the Mandela Effect. And if you want a copy of the scriptures... Uh, you can get a copy of scriptures by looking up the Institute for Scripture Research, or you can go to www.fossilizedcustoms.com. There's a bunch of stuff on there that'll bake your noodle, dude. <laughs>